Okay. <clears throat> now we have, uh, we will discuss defective contracts. This is the last part of contracts. So there are four defective contracts, recessible, voidable, or uh, unenforceable, and void contracts. So first we discuss defective contract, which is recessible contracts. So recessible contracts are those which have caused a particular economic damage, either to one of the parties or to a third person, who is the creditor, and which may, a creditor of the party, and which may be set aside even if valid. It may be set aside in whole or in part to the extent of the damage caused. So what are these recessible contracts? Number one, those entered into by a guardian whenever the ward suffers damage by more than one fourth of the value of the object. So the contracts entered to here by a guardian and the ward is a minor, you know? So the ward here suffers damage of more than one fourth of the value of the object. Say for example, the value of the object is one million and the guardian only sold it for 500,000 pesos. So Sword suffers 500,000 damage. Number two, agreed upon in representation of absentees. So again, suffers, the absentee suffers lesion by more than one fourth of the value of the property. So lesion is the, the damage, no? which is the, the <clears throat> gross inadequacy of the selling price. So absentees are those who are, whose domicile are unknown, what I may or was been lost missing. Number three, contracts where recession is based on fraud committed on the creditor. <clears throat> Number three, objects of litigation. A contract entered into by defendant without knowledge or approval of litigants or judicial authority. So there is a case, no? And the uh, object of the case is a property, real property, and without approval of the other party in the case or the judge, the holder of the title of the property and the holder of possession of the pro property sold it you know, to another person who is an non-litigant, then that sale is resistible. Number five, payment by an insolvent person because an insolvent person is declared by court and the creditors are prevented from uh, collecting from this person. So if the insolvent person, after being declared as insolvent, make, made a payment you know, to his debts and these debts are not yet due, so this payment can be rescinded. Also, number six, payment made in the state of insolvency. So what are the remedies available in uh, recessible contracts? So the remedy is recession. So recession is only a secondary remedy because it can only be available, number one, when the plaintiff has no other means to obtain <coughs> reparation, meaning main, uh, no other relief, no? but to rescind the contract. Rescind is like cancellation of the contract. Number two, the plaintiff must be able to return whatever he may be obliged to return due to recession. Because as a result of recession, if the court will allow recession, the parties in the contract must return the things they have received, no? or must restore the things say for example the ward <clears throat> in the case of the ward whose property was sold by the guardian so if the ward will file a case of the remedy of recession because he lost 500,000 pesos now if he cannot return his 500 pesos then the ward cannot file recession or if the the buyer is not in possession of the property any long anymore because he has already sold it to another person, then <clears throat> possession cannot be available. No? Number three, if the thing 
must have passed to third parties who did not act in bad faith. So this is my example. No? If the buyer has already sold the property to another person. Or if it must be made within the prescribed period of four years. <clears throat> so the minor has four years to file the remedy of recession. So now let's go to the fourth, uh, the second <clears throat> uh, void, I mean, defective contract, which is voidable contract. So voidable contracts, they are intrinsically defective. They can, they can be annulled, <clears throat> but until annulled, they are valid. No? The defect is due to vice of consent or legal incapacity. <coughs> so <clears throat> characteristic effective, it is effective, meaning it's still valid until set aside. It may be a sale or attack only in an action for the purpose. So to so file support <clears throat> can be confirmed or ratified. So confirmation is the proper term for curing the defect of avoidable contract. So it's not ratification. So it can be assailed only by a party whose consent was defective or his ears or assigns. So as we have already discussed, the contracts entered into by minors, insane, <clears throat> deaf mute who cannot read or write, persons specifically disqualified like civil interdiction or drunk persons or those in the state of hypnotic spell are voidable. No? So when they enter into contract, the contract is voidable. So on the other hand, when the, there is another kind of contract, those whose consent is vitiated by mistake, intimidation, violence, fraud, or undue influence. No? So when I, there's a mall owner but who compels the land owner to sell the property by intimidation or by violence no? by, or undue influence using his authority over the other <clears throat> or by mistake. No? So this one already been discussed. No? So this is another kind of voidable contract. The third kind of defective contract is an enforceable contract. So an enforceable contract, it is valid, <clears throat> but cannot be, uh, cannot compel its execution unless ratified. No? So it, there is intrinsic defect, uh, defect, extrinsic defect, and produces only legal effects after being ratified. So, the cure for unenforceable contract is ratification, while the cure of voidable contract is confirmation. So there are two kinds of unenforceable contracts. So when both parties are incapacitated to give consent, <clears throat> when both parties, so this time both parties, the seller or the buyer, are incapacitated to give consent. So the seller and the buyer are both demented or they are both insane no? so unlike in the invoidable contracts there's only one party who is incapacitated to give consent here in unenforceable contract both of the parties are incapacitated to give consent <clears throat> number two those which do not comply with statute of frauds so statute of frauds uh those who are not uh, complying with the forms, no? Ito itong discuss ng form. Ito must be in public instrument or must be in writing. So if they do not comply with this, then it is unenforceable. So if, for instance, you sold a real property without executing a public instrument, then that sale is unenforceable. So it cannot be, it cannot be enforced, no? So there are two ways of curing unenforceable contracts. Number one, failure of defendant to object in time of presentation of parole evidence in court. So parole evidence is like uh, testimony in court. So the defect of unenforceability is cured. Okay, so the owner failed to object while the, the, the buyer was making a testimony. Number or showing evidence 
Number two, acceptance of benefits under the contract. If there is performance in either part, then there is acceptance of performance. It takes it out of unenforceable contracts. So meaning if the payment uh, was received and then the buyer or the seller upon receiving the payment, he make use of the money. You know? He spent it, he benefited from it. So now the <clears throat> contract is cured. Okay. So how do you cure, cure it? You compel the other party to produce a, a written contract. So paswato ni siya written contract. Okay, number four, void or inexistent contracts. This kind of contracts produces no legal effect. So whatsoever, either against or in favor of anyone, there is no action for nullity. Necessary as such is ipso jury, a juridical declaration that the fact is merely a declaration. So by itself, the contract is void. Number two, uh, number three, it cannot be confirmed, ratified, or cured. So there is no cure for void or inexistent contract. The letter D, if performed, restoration is in order, except if party delicto will apply. No. Number so if meaning if performed, meaning there is a sale, so it should be restored. Let's meet what is uh, restoration is in order means. So except if pari delicto will apply. So pari delicto, if both parties in the sale are guilty. You know? So there's no need to restore because both of them are guilty. Now, letter E, the right to set up the defense of nullity cannot be waived. So the, the one who is uh, who's guilty of fraud must make up a defense. Otherwise... Uh, he would he would lose the case, no. And then letter F, imprescriptible, meaning it's not subject to prescription or expiration. So at any at any time, the injured party may file for the declaration of nullity of the that uh, deed or action. Letter G, anyone may invoke the nullity of the contract whenever its juridical effects are asserted against him. So it is not limited to the part parties in the contract, but it, anyone can invoke the nullity of the contract. You know? So meaning anyone can file uh, the nullity of the contract whenever he is affected. So these are the different kinds of void contract. Those lacking essentials, essential elements. There is no consent. There is no object, no cause. So essential formalities are not complied, uh, like donation, propter nuptias, like donations. No, they should comply with the form. Otherwise, that kind of contract is void. <clears throat> those which are absolutely simulated or fictitious so this these are no cause so what is absolutely simulated uh, fraud no imohimo simulated no like for instance uh, i i have i have a loan with the bank no ako utang sa banko 10 million pesos and i have a property and the bank knows that I own this property. And then because I'm afraid that the bank will attach my property to the loan because I am uh, I'm no longer paying my loan. So I make a simulated sale. Simulated sale to you. In order that the property's name will be transferred in your name. So the bank can no longer attach this property because it now belongs to you. But there is no cause will I buy it. So in this case, there is fraud. There is fraud against the creditors. 
So creditors are protected in contracts. So this can be uh, voided by the creditor. Number two, those which cause or object did not exist at the time of the transaction. So no cause, no object. No? So let's say, for example, you're going to uh, sell a, a cow. So when a cow, wala para pasatian sa mama. But you, you thought that the mother cow has already a calf inside her womb, but the actual story, there exists no calf, no? Wala pa baby inside. No, there's no baby cow inside. So in that case, the buyer or the seller or the thing you are selling is not existent at the time of the transaction. Number three, those whose object is outside the commerce of man. So there's no object. So if I sold to you again, Mactan Bridge for 5,000 pesos, this kind of sale is void. No? Void ng pagbaliga o public places. Number four, those which contemplate an impossible service. So there's no object. So impossible service could be illegal or those which cannot be performed because it's impossible. No? Say, for example, uh, I'll give you 10,000 pesos again to, to, to assassinate your neighbor. So this is a void contract. No? If you accept the 10,000 pesos, then that's a void contract. <clears throat> and lastly, those which intention of parties relative to principal object cannot be ascertained. Okay. And there are contracts which are prohibited by law, those expressly prohibited and declared or declared void by law. These contracts violate any legal provisions, whether it amounts to a crime or not. And number, let us see those which are illegal or illicit ones, like those whose cause or object or purpose is contrary to law. Morals, good customs, public order, public policy. Like example here, contract to sell or buy marijuana. So this is a prohibited contract. And that ends our discussion for today. So if you have any questions, you can write them in the chat box while we are going to proceed with the Q&A.